when you've had a trauma, it's not a story with a beginning, middle, and an end. something that the pieces don't quite fit together and sometimes they're out of order or don't even make logical sense in their early days. A second airplane, a 727 just ran into the building. There's a damage done to people when they're not allowed to tell their own story in their own words. I've never seen anything like it down here. Our goal was to give people the experience of having agency over their own story. They could start and stop the recording themselves. They could take as long as they wanted, speak in whatever language they felt most comfortable, and it was theirs to control. We're at a time where people are very well trained not to tell the truth anymore, to hide themselves, to hide vulnerability, to hide compassion to hide even kindness. And our project was to bust open space for that, for people to be as complicated and contradictory and, and human as they actually are. September 11th is my birthday. <laughs> so one can only imagine how hard it must be to celebrate the day of your birth in the face of all of that. It was a beautiful day and I was kind of wondering what I would be doing, planning on hanging out with friends and was watching the news like I always do in the morning when I heard about the first plane crashing into Tower One and was kind of like stunned and confused and was talking with friends and family members about it. And then when the second plane hit, I just immediately was like, I have to go down there. I have to see this for myself. I can't believe it. And I ran and I just grabbed my camera and one roll of film. And I saw some people, they started jumping off the towers. And I said, oh my God. <laughs> People yelling, help, please help, screaming. It was like an end of the war, believe me. For many years, I had been photographing the view outside of my bedroom window, my uh, view of the Trade Center area from my East Village bedroom window, a view that I grew up with. I remember as a very small child looking out the window and watching the clouds and looking at the people walking by along the street on 14th. And since I started that, I kind of became obsessed. I really fell in love with my view. That morning when I looked out my window and saw that large gray cloud, it really shook me. I, I knew there was something wrong right away. It was so dense and scary, and I remember getting this feeling inside of me, like, oh boy, something really serious is going on here. The thing that was most powerful to me when I went back through all the testimonies later was that there wasn't a single theme, that it really is a very layered experience. People experienced it differently, processed it differently, and took different meaning from that life experience. There's this belief that people have that because they saw things on TV, it felt like real time to them. But they turned off the TV, they went on with their lives. The rest of us had to live with the wreckage. And for as long as the pile, as they called it, was smoldering and still burning, you know, I could smell it every day until one day 
I guess the fires went out. I came to this country when I was 20 years old. Now I am 53. I remember before the attack, in the USA, uh, it feels different. They treat you a little bit different. It's very easy for you at that moment, years ago, to find a job, a situation to survive with your family. But as since the Walter Center uh, happens, everything changed. It's like you know, the people doesn't live with the same harmony. If I close my eyes, I can still see exactly the skyline with the Twin Towers in it and thinking, wow, 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 this is the city I live in. I look out now and it's like I still see that blind spot. It's like a, it's hard. It's like a fuzz. There's not been a time that my eyes looked downtown and didn't see it because it's in my mind's eye. They see the Walter Center now as a diversion, as a trophy, as a, I don't know, vacational uh, place, but uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a fun place. For me, it's a cemetery. A lot of people die over there. I can hear, you know, sometimes a man might, and the screaming, the yelling, the people who die in that moment. Twenty years goes by quickly, but I feel like that day doesn't feel like it's that far away, but it's always with me. It took me probably a good five years to not be as nervous anymore, but it was always something in the back of my mind. Because I lived in Fort Greene, I took the train over the Manhattan Bridge every day if I was coming into Manhattan and I could see what I would call ghost towers because even though they were no longer there, they were there in my mind and they will probably always be there in my mind. And I just felt like over time, my fear of taking the train into the city and just getting back to normal life um, settled in. My post office is gone. All my sweet little stores that I would go to for veggies, they've turned into something else. Some of the brown stones, I watched them be taken down slowly, brick by brick. Maybe not so slowly, actually, pretty quick. And turned into bigger, shinier buildings to house a lot more people. It feels like a different city sometimes when I drive in New York. They search for a meaning that helps them to move forward, and it takes telling that story again and again and again until they find a way to shape it into something they can live with. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.